Namaste. We have recently celebrated International Yoga Day and the Yoga Day has been celebrated across the world in different cities and also the different aspects of uh, yoga has been celebrated um, across the globe. Today I am here to present you one of the uh, most uh, beautiful way of uh, yoga, the most complete form of yoga, it is called Pancha Sutra Yoga. This goes, uh, takes the yoga into the very next level. So we are going to present that yoga today and uh, it is not a new form of yoga. It has been practicing for uh, in the Indian subcontinent for the last 6000 years. There is a scientific archaeological evidence available in the Harappa Mohenjo-daro civilization for this uh, kind of yoga being practiced then. That is the 6000 year old and there is also a recent evidence which is evolving which has to be carbon dated and a uh, rough estimate is going up to 17,000 years in this continent. So I am going to present you that kind of uh, yoga. So before uh, we start off with that yoga, let me start with my introduction. My name is Shekhar. Uh, my name is, full name is Chandrasekhar. I was actually, I am an entrepreneur uh, who has been uh, working in different countries and come back to India uh, four years back. And uh, I am actually traveled across India starting from Kedar to Kanyakumari in different various places, uh, different parts of India, uh, collecting different parts of the, the tradition and uh, trying to collect, collate all this into uh, information. And then, uh, you know, the major inspiration for me uh, to start into yoga was about 10 years back. Uh, I was in uh, my, one of my client, Lara Bertarelli. She came down from France and she was here. Uh, we went down for a cup of coffee in MG Road. At that point in time, uh, like we had a cup, uh, good chat and she said she's practicing yoga and being from the Indian subcontinent I said I'm also practicing yoga then when very interesting conversation took off and she asked me are you practicing Hatha Yoga or Ashtanga Yoga that actually took me by a surprise I'm from this continent and I know the yoga and I thought I know yoga but then uh, she's very specific are you practicing Hatha Yoga or Ashtanga Yoga I did not know the difference then I thought, you know, let me go back and I'll have to, you know, if I'm practicing here and I'm, I'm actually uh, into this uh, for a very long time. So then I, from the 10 year back, this journey started and I've invested, I've gone through the different aspects of yoga and understood uh, the scriptures, learned Sanskrit and I've done a lot of uh, research onto this. And based on that, I'm, uh, you know, got, I was uh, not only based on that, uh, in fact, I was lucky enough to get to the depth of the yoga and to the roots of it by the grace of uh, Pancha Acharyas. So there are five Gurus and because of that, uh, because of those Gurus, I was able to, I was blessed with them and because of that, I am able to get to the roots of this uh, thing. I have also um, luckily met with a scientist who was working on this. He was uh, in um, NAL, National Aeronautic Laboratories, India. He was the deputy chairman and being in such a high position after he retired, he was doing a research on this Sanskrit book and then I got in interest and inspiration to get into more depth of it and by all this my hard work plus the luck I am able to get to the basics of it. Now before we get into this Pancha Sutra Yoga what it is and what it is going to do for us how it is different from other forms of yoga let me ask you a simple question. We celebrated the yoga day across the globe with different postures of yoga has been done. Now my question is is that really a yoga that that's been practiced and that's been publicized uh, across the globe is it yoga i would say it is not yoga there is a simple reason for that yoga uh, the patanjali who is supposed to be the uh, who is the um, expert in the yoga field and who is the father of yoga he in fact defines what we do as the postures or the asanas. What we did uh, across the globe is only asanas, not the yoga itself. Now you may ask, is asana not yoga? Is it one? Is it not one and the same? We had to get get to the definition of uh, asana. Patanjali says asana is his definition of asana is sthiram sukham asanam. The one which is firm and the one which is comfortable is asana. Now, what is it actually asana? The Sanskrit word asana directly relates to uh, something called a seat. You go to walk into a movie theater and you find a lot of different vari variety of seats there. So those seats are called the asanas. Now the movie is different from the asana. Yoga is actually the movie and the asana is, 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 is the seat of it. Now the seat, we cannot call the seat itself as the movie. 
Likewise, you can have different variety of seats, but we are actually stuck in the level of seats only. So uh, you can see on the screen, left side you can see the, uh, see the screen uh, seats and on the right side you can see the different postures of yoga, they are one and the same. Uh, by according to Patanjali, it is Thiram Sukham Asanam. Now what else is there in uh, yoga? Patanjali definition of yoga has eight other aspects apart from asana. What are these eight other aspects? Starts with Yama, Niyama, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dhyana, Dharana, Samadhi. These are the uh, eight uh, limbs of uh, yoga. Now, one of them is the asana. Now, what, what, what do all this represent? Like uh, Yama stands for our social values. Brahmacharya, Asteya, Aparigraha. Like that, there are uh, the social rules that we are supposed to follow, like being truthful, not being, uh, you know, harming other uh, creatures. These are the aspects that is described in Yama. Niyama comes to personal hygiene and the, you know, personal rules that we are supposed to follow. Yama, Niyama, these are the uh, fundamentals, the first two steps of uh, yoga. Then comes the Asana, is the posture or the seat of yoga. Then the Pranayama. Pranayama, it is loose in pranayama, it is loosely translated into as a air, a breathing exercise. But according to the Panchasutra Yoga that we are going to present today, prana is not equal to air. It is very loose translation. Uh, the very simple reason because there are, uh, you know, according to Yoga Shastras and other uh, texts, we have got ten vayus inside us. Vayu is a vayu is air. So we got dasha vayus inside us and pancha pranas or the five pranas prana is a field so we've got five fields around our body the one is just called a mukya prana it starts from our belly bottom up to the top so if you draw a circle starting from your belly bottom to the top that is called the prana belly bottom to the bottom is apana prana apana vyana udhana and there is one which is equally distributed it is called samana so we've got five fields we do not have one prana but we've got five prana that's why in uh, Hindi and Sanskrit it's called prano. So there have got uh, so these pranas ayama is is not restricting to any rules. Yama is as I said is the rules social rules that we follow. Ayama is you know taking it away from the rule. Prana ayama is pranayama. So the definition of uh, the modern day yoga which we celebrate which we practice today is uh, restricting the pranayama to the air. But here we take it to the level of field. And next. To, after pranayama comes the pratyahara. Pratyahara is prati ahara. So prati is, you know, we all of senses they run after their own food. We think having food, you know, we only have we consider food as the food. But in yoga, the drishti that we the eye sees that is also food. What we hear from our uh, the shabda that we hear from our uh, ears is also food. So for all the senses, there are different kinds of food which is available. Prati ahara means turning inwards. So the face, we are generally, when we are doing our day-to-day -day activities, we are focusing outwards to the natural world. And in the yoga, what we do is we turn inward and we will not see any of this. So that's why it's called pratyahara. So turning inward is called the pratyahara. Dhyana is, according to Patanjali, there's a definition of dhyana. And in, according to him, so dhyana is first comes the dharana in let let's uh, let me explore the dharana first dharana is desha bandhasya chittasya dharana desha bandha means uh, you know holding to one object your chitta holding your chitta or your mind into one place is called the dharana tatra pratyaya ekatanata dhyanam so becoming one with that you becoming ekatanata ekatana means you become actually one with the the continuous flow of uninterpreted uninterpreted attention for example, to give you an example, you see the sun and close your eyes. There is an image of the sun which comes inside you. So that image which actually comes and flickers and goes away is dhyana. Dharana, it becomes dharana only when it becomes continuous flow without any interruptions and it, it doesn't flicker. So that is the uh, definition of dharana and dhyana. And comes the then comes the samadhi. In samadhi, it is beyond all the states. You become one with that you and that the object that you're seeing they will not be two different objects but then you become one with that so with that the dhyana dharana samadhi so 
these are the eight limbs of patanjali yoga or the ashtanga yoga so what we saw first as the asanas that we practice practice all over the world it is a part of one type of yoga it's called the hatha yoga hatha yoga's focus is more on asanas hatha actually means uh, by force doing something by force now doing something by force is the uh, is the the specialization of uh, hatha yoga is the asanas from asanas we need to move into the patanjali yoga which actually covers the eight different limbs now the question is if all these eight limbs put together does it become yoga to answer this you can see on the screen uh, there's a image of the man with all the limbs so now if you cut off these limbs and then join them together does it become a man again he will not become a man you know for example you take a dead body and take all the cut it parts and try to build it together so man is actually more than the sum of its parts that is the definition of uh, you know what what is required is the soul so if you add soul then it become he becomes a man otherwise it's a collection of organs now to you know in fact uh, in most of these uh, hindu textures and uh, in the most of upanishads they give the same example to prove there is an atma they cut off your uh, you know for example you take an image of yourself and cut your hand so that becomes your hand not you likewise if you cut keep cutting all your parts it becomes your parts but then you will not exist in the end so the you uh, what is called as you or the the soul of it is actually to more than the sum of uh, the parts likewise if we put all the ashtangas together this yoga it will not become a complete yoga it's still the parts put together now what is that yoga which starts after this to know that uh, patanjali defines it as patanjali's definition of yoga is you know he says yoga chitta vritti nirodha but there is a definition of yoga which is actually you know different from that you find in gita for example in bhagavad gita they say krishna says yoga karma su kaushalam so it is also the work so there it is very uh, you know uh, defined in a very uh, different patterns in, across the different texts and the yoga that we are going to talk about is not the hatha yoga it is not the patanjali yoga so the pancha sutra yoga it actually transcends all of this into a uh, new domain here the definition of yoga is yuj iti yoga yuj means union so the individual consciousness becomes one with the universal consciousness so the union of individual consciousness with the with the universal consciousness is the yoga in the example of uh, cinema seat we took uh, in the beginning cinema seat for example is an asana and along with that you put other eight other accessories like the screen you have the sound box system you have the lightings and you have the um, things so all of them put together it becomes a complete theater with a seat in it now you have the complete theater you have the seat but the movie is missing so the movie itself is the uh, yujit yoga or the consciousness the transition of your consciousness once you have these uh, accessories all the eight accessories in place how your consciousness transcends from the individual consciousness to the universal consciousness is the subject matter of this yoga which is called pancha sutra yoga there are different names to this uh, same yoga it's called vedamaya yoga uh, for example uh, and also it's called jangama yoga it is also called linganga samarasya yoga and it's also called shivadvaita yoga atho shiva yoga so this yoga the focus is more on your consciousness and how that consciousness uh, transcends now there are um, we are going to go in detail about how this consciousness goes but let's find out who is the founder of this uh, you know founder of this yoga and how this has been uh, transcending if we go back to that question in very recent times the founder of uh, you know this yoga is the guru of patanjali himself uh, patanjali's guru was um, the, there was a guru called um, nandikeshwara he is the guru of uh, patanjali as well as uh, the other uh, saint we know vatsayana vatsayana wrote these kama sutras patanjali wrote the yoga sutras and uh, the guru of him uh, the nandikeshwara he actually was practicing this and he popularized it but much beyond nandikeshwara uh, you know if you go thousands of years back there are five acharyas who actually first time came down from the five faces of shiva and established this uh, pancha sutras so these acharyas are renuka acharya dharuka acharya dhenukarna acharya ganta karna and vishwakarna acharyas 
So these five acharyas they came down, and they selected five rishis. Uh, for example, uh, Vyasa, Agastya, Dadichi, Durvasa, and Sananda. These are the five rishis. For them, they gave out these five sutras. So based on these five sutras, this uh, yoga has been established. These five sutras also have a name. Uh, first sutra is called the Padvidi Sutra. The second one is called Vrishti Sutra, Lambana Sutra, Muktagucha Sutra, and Panchavarna Sutra. These are the five sutras uh, which are uh, propounded by them. And based on that, so the this entire uh, yoga has been established. Now, what this yoga consists of, and how the consciousness moves. The consciousness moves in six different levels. And this six different levels of this yoga has been very detailedly explained in a book called uh, Siddhanta Shikamani. So the first level of uh, consciousness, it is called, uh, you know, the there are uh, different shaktis also. There are different, uh, you know, um, aspects of the consciousness which evolve. First is the Shraddha. Shraddha is the interest. First you become in establish an interest and the established interest becomes loyalty and the loyalty becomes avadhana. Avadhana is when you completely accept the person, what he is saying and what, what the words coming out of him, you will completely accept it, is called the avadhana. And after avadhana is the uh, is the ananda, you get ananda by this. And then the samarasa, shraddha, nishta, avadhana, ananda, anubhava and then the uh, samarasya. These are the f uh, six different levels the consciousness goes through. And as and when your consciousness is progressing, it has given the name, uh, you know, the, the different names have been given to this consciousness. The first level of consciousness is called the Bhakta, second one is called Mahesha, third one is called Prasadi, fourth one is called the Pranalingi, fifth one is the Sharana, and the sixth one is Aikya. So, in all the six uh, phases, the consciousness moves. So, this yoga uh, is really into consciousness and it takes um, yoga into a very different level. Uh, this is one form of the yoga which is uh, you know which you can do after all this uh, eight limbs have been established and this is one of the oldest uh, forms of yoga that we are going to introduce as pancha sutra yoga there may be different varieties of yoga which is coming through uh, but we are going to introduce uh, all the aspects of this yoga it comes with its own uh, model of the universe and how uh, you know you transcend that model into the highest level so that also comes along with this uh, yoga so do wait for my next video. In the next video, I will be describing more about what are the six levels of consciousness and how do we um, you know, transcend this uh, consciousness, what is the process involved and what the book Siddhanta Shikamani talks about all this. So we will know that in detail. Uh, so for now, I will take a break. Thank you very much for watching this. Thank you.